how long do salt chlorine cells last? And the thing is, you're, you right away, you've probably read three to five years, right? Three to five years, that's how long salt cells last. That fails to quantify this in any appreciable way. And I want to break it down for you. And the first way that we do that is I establish that we need to know when you buy a salt cell, whatever size, whatever brand, it has a finite amount of chlorine it will be able to make in its lifetime before it's just kaput. It cannot generate chlorine for you anymore. So now we know that. We know each and every cell that we buy has a finite amount of chlorine built into it. And so there's no trick to the way that you operate that's going to extend it in any way other than just being aware that the higher the output is on your unit, the faster you're going to need to buy a new one. So the way in which you make a salt cell last longer is you lower the chlorine demand. If you needed less chlorine in your pool, such that the eight that you used to have your output setting on for your salt chlorine air, that's way too much, we got too much chlorine, and now you turned it down to five. If you were to accomplish that, then now you're going to get, you know, 30% longer life with your salt cell. So there are actually a couple of different ways you can do that. You can pair things with a salt chlorine system in order to just get more benefits. And one of the fringe benefits being that the salt chlorine cell itself is going to last longer. So what kind of stuff am I talking about here? Well, you could install a germicidal UV lamp. You could install an AOP system, advanced oxidation process. You could look at ozone systems. There's even mineral systems and some, you know, there's a, a bunch of them that I don't necessarily recommend. Um, but, and that normally I'll just say that normally those ones are relating to metals. I don't really like minerals, which is metals. I don't like adding metals to swimming pools. I find that can lead to unintended consequences, the benefits which can be had through those systems can be had through other systems with less serious or less uncontrollable problems associated with them. Like a germicidal UV, U, a germicidal UV lamp is a great example. Love the thing. It's very simple. It's old technology. There's not a lot of moving parts to it. And it does a pretty good job of improving the quality of your pool water and reducing the amount of chlorine that you're going to use. So when people start talking about chlorine, a lot of the times you look at it like, yeah, I'm at two parts per million. I want to come down to one part per million. Is, is this system going to allow me to do that? And I encourage people to look at chlorine consumption differently. I would encourage you to just consider your swimming pool on an annual basis. How much chlorine does your pool use on an annual basis? Now, could we reduce that number by 50% by installing a germic germicidal UV lamp or an AOP system? And the answer is probably yes, we could probably do that. So the, I'm not as concerned about the day-to-day -day part per million. I just say keep it well above zero. That's the main, that's the main goal here. Somewhere two to five parts per million is the range. But I want to reduce the amount that we're using. And using uh, germicidal UV or AOP can do that, though it's notable that they do use consume chlorine as part of their function. So it's, you know, there's a little bit of both happening here, but there's a net positive benefit here that at the end of the day, if you had a pool that, you know, you ran exactly the same as the next pool, the only difference being is that you have the UV or the AOP installed on one and not the other, you would use more chlorine in the other. And so that's the main benefit here. You're going to reduce your chlorine consumption by installing and using using something like a UV light or an AOP system or ozone or potentially mineral systems if you find those benefits appealing. Now, no matter what size salt cell you have, it's going to last more time. The time that you before you have to buy a new one has been extended because it's just doing a lot of less heavy lifting. The amount of chlorine that the salt is generating is less on a day-by-day -day basis. But here's a tip. Here's something that you might be doing, and it could be reducing the lifetime that you're going to get from your salt cell. And it comes down to the cleaning and maintenance. So you know how salt cells scale up, and eventually you have to remove the salt cell from the system, and you have to submerge it in a cleaning solution, and it removes all that scale, and then you can return it to your pool system again. So the amount of times and the frequency that you have to do that will change depending on your water chemistry. Like if you had really high calcium hardness levels, you're going to have to do that more often than a pool with very low calcium hardness levels. And so the solution that you use is a very mild 
muriatic uh, acid and water solution. Something, you know, 10 parts water and one part acid is the mixture. And it's not supposed to be very reactive. Whereas I've seen a lot of people use a very strong, sometimes even straight muriatic acid to clean their salt cell. Well, it is very effective and it works extremely quickly. There is a major price to pay here. And that is it damages the metals that the salt cell is made from and it harms the longevity that you're supposed to be getting from it. So a slow and low soak with those salt cells when you're cleaning them is very important. And getting too aggressive with an acid wash is a sure way to end up having to buy one sooner than later. So three to five years, that's how long salt cells last. Maybe twice that, six to 10 years in a seasonal area where the pool's only running part of the year. But this is only a general statement, and the reality is that every swimming pool is, is unique, and this is one of the ways that it's unique. What is the chlorine demand for the swimming pool? How many you know gallons? What's the volume of this pool? Is the salt cell sized appropriately to the pool? Is it a little undersized? Is it a little oversized? You know That's going to make a huge difference, and I guess the way you could interpret that is what is yours set at? What is the, the happy medium that you've come to in terms of settings where you're not having to constantly go up and down and up and down and up and down? Five, middle of the road. Three, that salt cell is pretty big for your pool. Eight, that salt cell is pretty small for your pool. So those would be how I would interpret those examples. I expect to get three to five years out of the average example. If your salt cell is oversized for your pool, you could get a lot longer than three to five years, five, six, seven eight years it depends on how oversized it is of course you can't oversize too much because you don't want your salt cell so large that it's over chlorinating your tiny little pool even when you're set all the way at one so that would be a problem but conversely if your salt cell is barely big enough to handle the day-to-day -day chlorine demand of your swimming pool and it's just cranking it out and it's set to eight or ten 24 hours a day you're not going to get very you're not going to get 5 years out of that salt cell. That salt cell is going to be dead and gone long before 5 years because it's it's running like a factory 24/7 365, you know, and it's only got a finite amount it's made to give and that finite amount you're going to get like 1 to 3 years out of a salt cell working under those conditions. I hope this additional information helps to, you know, allow you to understand a little bit more about what to expect in terms of longevity. And maybe the additional information is enough that it's painted a picture that you know how to, you know, assess this for your own swimming pool and determine how long you think your salt cell is going to last for. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.